As it stands, we have our BHAT test suite up and running and we've defined our get post, put patch and delete scenarios for our album feature. And we've created a background step in the album feature to set up our database by dog fooding our own API. Now I keep saying it, but it's worth repeating that the way that we're using BHAT here is unusual. So we're trying to save ourselves the hassle of creating and maintaining multiple identical test suites. We're gonna have a bunch of different JSON API implementations that all follow roughly this same spec. And this is a non-typical circumstance. It's purely for the sake of this tutorial. But as we've extracted and centralized our test suite, we hit on some unique challenges that we would typically find quite trivial to solve. So adding data is one, but cleaning up after ourselves is another. And what I don't want to do is have to set up some weird slash cleanup endpoint or something of that nature. And when this is hit, this would then truncate our database or something. It seems really nasty. So instead, I'm gonna hard code and then smash in a SQL command via PDO. So I've already got this in my clipboard. I'm gonna jump into the feature context just above our real implementation. I'm gonna drop this in to clean up our database. So again, this is another before scenario hook. What this is saying is we're gonna have a database running on our local host. That database is gonna be called basic API. Gonna be on the standard MySQL port of 3306, DB user, DB password. All of this is combined together to make our DSN which we then used to create a new PDO instance. And from that PDO instance, we run a single query, which truncates our album table. So if you'd like to know a lot more about PDO, there's a tutorial linked in the show notes. It's not one of mine, but it's the best tutorial that I've ever come across about PDO. And essentially what's happening here is by truncating the album table, we're gonna reset that auto incrementing integer for the ID back to one, which is good because as mentioned in the previous video, we're going to anticipate that certain records exist with certain IDs and this implicitly expects that the IDs always start at one. So the downside to this approach is that when we switch projects, we'll need to swap out our configuration. Maybe the database name will change. Maybe it will be that we're no longer using MySQL. We switch to using Postgres instead. So we're probably going to have to come back and look at this a little bit later on when we switch to different implementations. But for now, this should be good enough. Now, I appreciate that at this point in the course, we haven't even got to setting up and configuring a database. So yeah, this seems a little bit strange. But anyway, with that in mind, let's get on to setting up our database in the very next video.